Parallel, parallel, parallel on our side, but sometimes you might have something that might come in series first, maybe an inline resistor on some of the larger uh, three-phase services, a high-pitch neutral system, for example. If you look at it as on schematic, that, that resistor that's in line with your phase conductor is a, is a resistive load value, and if you draw that out as a branch circuit, you'd have a, you know, a series parallel si uh, system. Make sense? No? Darn it, I thought the picture would, I thought the picture would do it. Let me see here. Let's see if I can do a better picture here. So that is your service. There's your meter right here. And you have a breaker right here. And I were to come out here to a small motor that has a resistive heater in it, kind of keep the block, the engine block go warm during the uh, winter time. There's the other leg coming back without a resistor. And of course, we have a resistor load here, a resistor load here being the two windings. What I've got there is a series parallel circuit from the panel to the first thing that I hit, which is series, to the parallel, right? I'd call it series parallel. If I've got a production source on this side, though, that I've got series, 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 and then I parallel these two together like this, series, series, and series. Now I'm going this direction, which is series parallel, right? Which is the same thing, but if you're looking at it traditionally, if you flip that over to this side and look at it on the same piece of paper as you normally would, you'd be looking at this over here on this side as parallel series, right? Does that make more sense? So in other words, since you're looking at it on the other side, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same wording, it's just the reverse of it. So it's instead of being parallel series, which is the way you would think of it when you lay this out like that, being these being your loads and working backwards, you would see that as a parallel series, but it's not a parallel series, it's a series parallel. Okay, if that confuses you, write down the word series parallel. That way, you know, if you have that question, you know the answer is. That's easy, right? So the answer is series parallel. That's correct. That's really all that matters. Uh, the whole thing is series parallel. Absolutely. All right. Uh, cost of electricity in uh, given load is something that's been, uh, it's a, it's not a very big category, but it's been out there here and there. I haven't heard from it in a while, so I don't know if it was a test bed question that's gone away now, but just in case you have it, it's a real easy formula. It's the watts times the hours times the rate divided by a thousand. Watts times your hours of use times your rate divided by a thousand. Okay? Now, if you have a time period given in there, for example, most of the time when we're talking about a load and a, and a value and watts, we're talking about a, a point in time, right? And that point in time may be an hour's worth of you know, usage, might be uh, two hours worth, might be a day. But then I could ask you, if, if you know what the day is, how much does it cost for a year? Then I'm giving you another time element that I'm asking you, what's that dollar cost that you know of? Extrapolate it out for a number of weeks or months or years, whatever. So you can substitute right in here by the hours, the rate, I don't want to use the word rate, uh, just a time period. So if this load right here, for example, that they give you, which is a, a range that's at 8,500 watts, average four hours a day, but not even more than one period, and more than two hours, so in other words, it's not continuous due to load, and then it is per day that we're looking at that. So when I'm putting down here in the standard formula that this is an 8,500 watt, four hours a day, I'm doing 8,500, is that mine? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what's trying to tell Okay, 8,500 times uh, four hours a day, but they're asking me, what is it for an entire year? So that year is the second time component that I'm talking about inserting here, which is going to be 365, right? Times whatever the rate is. Now, the only other thing to keep in mind is, if they give you the rate like that, that's expressed in hundreds. 11.2 cents is a hundreds unit, but, or, but it's actually in, in whole numbers. To convert that to a mathematical number, you want to put it the same way you'd write it down on your bank ledger. Because 11.2 cents would be 0.112 as, a, as a, a real number, right? That means you got 11 cents in your pocket and maybe a, almost a quarter of another one. <coughs> so it, it times 0.112 even though we usually express it in 11.2 cents like that. So if you don't have the word cent behind it, to use it mathematically, convert it to a decimal. So what would that animal cost then for the entire year? At Austin Energy's rate of 11.2 cents, which is actually a pretty low rate for the cheap. That's, yeah. For the Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's really not, they're, they're probably actually, on the residential side, they're probably closer to about 13 cents or 14.
have that formula, by the way, on the, on the back formula page. You've got that uh, back there. So uh, that's one that they don't give you. So if you can't remember that one, you're going to want to write it down in your book somewhere. And uh, you know, anything that's not attached to uh, page uh, chapter eight, excuse me, chapter nine, table eight, or anything not directly related to chapter nine or chapter eight or seven or something of that nature. I put those notes in the back, probably on page 8, 8, 15 or 8. I know on page 8, 20 or 8, 10, one of those two, there's a good spot back here. Let's see. I think it's 8, 20. I mean, you can put it wherever you want. It's just being able to remember where it's at really is what my point is. So if you look on the, uh, I don't want you to, don't put anything on 8, 15 because i got a spot. I've got something reserved for that one. But 8, 20 has got a nice blank spot. So you got 710, 720, and 820. Those three numbers, those three pages, 710 being the stuff that we're going to reserve for some other formulas and whatnot here in a minute. Eight, uh, or 720 being where you just put all your voltage drop stuff. And 820 is an easy number to remember. And it's also a page that's similar to where you put stuff like this right here on there. So you pull it out there, you know, in those. You could also, you know, some of that stuff that I've got for you on that uh, page 41, I tell you to put it on page 710, but you can put some of that back here if you'd like, maybe your own blog stuff. That is kind of the same deal, okay? But the formula is W times H. So we've got 8,500 uh, times four, which is my time period, and 365 days a year times 0.112 divided by 1,000. What do you get on the top line? Big number, I'm sure, 8,500 times, uh, let's see, four times uh, 365 times 0.112 divided by 1,000, about 1,300 bucks, $1,389.92 a year. 89 Yeah. So $1,389.92 a year to run a, a uh, other rain or something like that? Yes, what it is, rain and man pressure 35 watts. And if you put it on too small of a wire over the course of about five years, it'll cost you an additional about 15 to, to two grand. If you run it at the wire size, it's the minimum number that the code allows us to do. This additional cost load for about three years. Five years is right at five grand, a thousand dollars a year. Move it one step up and you, you'll shed about 80% of that value. And then you raise it beyond that, you don't get much return for your, your, your money. So, but if one wire size on a rain blow and one wire size up on like your water heater, things that run a lot, will save you more money than you'd ever have any ever clue on. And it all has to do with this this right here, which you can turn around and use this formula just like this with a WAD. And that in terms of the VAR, and before you know it, you can start figuring out what an individual load costs on a on a wire size difference. Okay, there's some uh, example questions. We're not worried about that, and uh, that is it for that. All right, last thing I want to do before we get too much further, I want to talk about the index real quick. Uh, you guys turn back to your back of your book. Um, tell you what, I give you a test question, and you tell me kind of how you uh, would answer. There, this one down at the bottom is that one that we just did uh, a minute ago on the voltage drop. That's almost word for word uh, off the exam, so. Uh, this is word for word, that's word for word, that's word for word. So I mean everything on here is kind of, we worked this one, we worked that one, and if y'all want to uh, jot those down later, again, we worked this one already. So we just got those two right there, and we'll work that here in a minute. So it's really just that one. But um, If I give you a question, uh, let's see here. I just lost my, my question in my head. All right, let's do, we'll just do that uh, top one there. The minimum number of branch circuits is the other uh, last kind of thing that we're going to cover that is non-code specific. And really the only thing that boils down to when you're talking about minimum circuits, we're talking about making sure that you uh, never round down on them. Okay. So in the case of the one that's at the top there, and you've got the same one in your uh, textbook, but it's a 7200 VA value uh, total on lighting load. So they're saying that if you take a thousand of lights, you've got 7200 VA worth of uh, output on those lights, commercial lighting. And they're telling you that that's continuous duty. The uh, breakers that we're using is a 15 amp circuit, and the voltage is at 277 volts. Now, before I get too much further than that, how many of you guys have, how many of y'all have heard the, the kind of the rule of thumbs that you don't want to put more than 16 amps on a 20 amp breaker? 
right? A lot, right? Is it all pretty common? You ever heard of any guy, any guy say that for them? Yeah. Stays on the plans usually when I'm doing stuff. Yeah, now on spec sometimes they'll do that, yeah. absolutely. Is it code rule? Yeah, you so. You sure? Every, every time across the board? All 20 amp breakers? There you go, that's exactly right. What they're, if you're talking about a breaker, right? And, it's, and of course, there's another rule that's a fashion place blind. So.